everybody so much for joining us today. It is our December, wow, December 2020, finally, um, support group meeting. We are joined today by John McDonald. He's going to be joining us from Speech Vive, which is a really cool um, option for for um, speech issues with Parkinson's disease. Um, John, let's see here, it looks like you are all good to go. Let's see, I'm actually going to hand it over to you. Um, okay. Yep, and we can hear you perfect. So good. we are ready to go. Well, hi, everybody. Sorry, uh, can you hear the dog barking in the background? No, you can't. All right. Give me one second. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. It's usually a child for me instead of a dog, so I totally get it. So that is Bell. That's Bell the Bulldog who smelled something outside. There was a deer or something walking through the yard, so she goes crazy. But anyway, so. Um, Good afternoon, and um, thank you for, for uh, having me. My name is John McDonald, and I'm here to give you a, a presentation on Speech Vive, which is a new FDA-approved Medicare-covered uh, device that will help people with Parkinson's who have issues in projecting their voice. Um, so we've got you know 10 or so slides here. If at any time you have a question, uh, please don't hesitate to interrupt me. Um, I would like this to be a, you know, a mutual uh, engagement uh, type of presentation, if at all possible. So just a little bit about me. Um, I am a 25-year a veteran of Medtronic deep brain stimulation, so I am familiar uh, with the Parkinson space. Uh, I retired from Medtronic and came back into the Parkinson space when I found this interesting device that uh, I believe can help uh, a multitude of, of people with a very debilitating issue um, that is, uh, it's called hypokinetic dysarthria or low or soft vo voice. So let's get started here. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, uh, don't hesitate to interrupt. But uh, speech five, let me see if I can get my cursor to work, come on. Okay, let me, uh, there we go, there we go. Oh. All right, so as I said, um, and, and probably not a surprise uh, to many of you, uh, but low or soft voice in Parkinson's disease is a very common issue. In fact, 90% uh, of people with Parkinson's either have or will have at some time through the course of their disease, a condition called hypokinetic dysarthria, just a fancy term for saying that you have low or quiet voice. And the reason uh, that you have this, this disorder with your voice and hence problems with communication and speech um, is the same reason that we have uh, the other motoric symptoms of Parkinson's disease like tremor or, excuse me, dyskinesia or uh, the festinating gait. There is a damage done to the, uh, to the circuit in the brain called the basal ganglia, and that's why um, we have this issue present as, as well. So um, it's interesting to note, though, that since uh, hypokinetic dysarthria or soft voice is really one of the most common um, issues with Parkinson's disease, it's interesting to note that less than 10% of Parkinson's patients generally get referred to speech language pathology or speech therapy uh, to help with their disorder. And you know, why, why is that? Well, um, you know, there's not a lot of time when you're with your neurologist. These, these appointments are generally 15, 20 minutes a piece. And you tend to focus on the motoric issues uh, of, of Parkinson's. Um, you know, the tremor, the dyskinesia, the, uh, the rigidity, um, the, the balance issues. Uh, speech is generally considered a non-motor symptom, and it's just not focused on as much um, as the motoric symptoms. But I'm here to, to give this presentation to let you know that there are things you can do uh, to greatly improve the voice volume uh, if you are affected with this condition uh, in PD. So um, right now, the, really the, the, the only thing that has been available for a Parkinson's patient who has a soft voice, who can't project their voice so they can't be heard and having issues with communication, uh, is a treatment called LSVT. So the Lee Silverman voice, uh, voice treatment, which was created in 1987, and actually about just 50 miles up the road from where I sit right now in Boulder, Colorado. 
Um, it was created in 1987, and this is a treatment, um, a, uh, an intensive coaching model, a behavior modification treatment uh, that absolutely works. So LSVT Loud absolutely works, and it's been shown in numerous clinical studies to um, actually increase voice projection, the, the sound pressure levels, your voice volume by 30 to 50 percent. Um, it is, however, does have some drawbacks because it's generally most effective when patients are highly motivated to do the LSVT therapy. Um, this is a therapy that requires you to go four times a week for an hour for four straight weeks, and then you have a lifetime of at-home exercises to practice in order to maintain the benefit uh, that LSVT can give you. Um, it works uh, very well when you have a very engaged and supportive care partner um, and also an intact level of cognition. And as we know with Parkinson's disease, that sometimes, you know, in the later years especially, that cognition can become an issue. So LSVT is an important and incredibly important uh, contribution to the field. Um, but now um, we're going to talk about another device that is has been introduced that will give the same benefits of LSVT loud, but do it in a much different manner, in a manner that many patients find to be uh, a lot easier to comply with. So the, uh, the technology, as I said, uh, LSVT was introduced uh, over 30 years ago, but you know, a lot has happened. So this is just my, my little walk down memory lane for some people to, uh, to think about how much time has passed since there's been a new therapy, a new treatment for people with low or soft voice issues in Parkinson's disease. So in 1987, that was the year that Oprah Winfrey actually debuted her uh, national talk show host or national talk show. Um, it was uh, Dynasty was the number one show on television and with Linda Evans and her shoulder pads were, were very much in vogue. Whitney Houston had the number one album and John Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer was the number one song back in 1987. Uh, sadly, it was also the year that we lost Christy McCullough and the crew of the Space Shutter Challenger. Um, and it was the year that Chernobyl, uh, the Chernobyl accident um, uh, happened. Um, and lastly, in 1987, if you wanted to listen to music uh, portable music, what you would do is you would take your Sony Walkman and pop in your um, your cassette, and then you would use a pair of corded headphones that are attached to the Walkman and listen to your music that way. And why was the headphones, why were they corded? Well, it's because Bluetooth technology wouldn't have been invented for another seven years. So the point here is that there's been a, a lot of water under the bridge. There's been a lot of time that has uh, elapsed since the Parkinson's community had a new uh, an exciting treatment for the issue of low or soft voice and that speech vibe. So um, what is it? Well, speech vibe is a wearable prosthetic. So it's a wearable device and I'm gonna show it to you here. And it's, so this is the speech vibe device and hopefully, um, hopefully you can see it, but it's a wearable prosthetic. It's approved by the FDA. It's actually covered now by, by Medicare. Um, and it's a device that does a couple of things. Number one, it will immediately improve your ability to speak louder as soon as you put the device on. Um, and it has the very important effect of improving quality of life. Because as we know, uh, patients who have the condition of hypokinetic dysarthria or low or soft voice uh, can tend to retreat from uh, communication environments. They may not talk on the phone as much. They may not uh, be conversing with their primary communication partner, usually a spouse or a supportive caregiver. Uh, perhaps we're not speaking uh, to the grandkids because uh, people just have a hard time hearing the patient with Parkinson's because of this condition. Uh, so Speech5 has been, um, is a new, a relatively new technology that has been uh, used by over 350 patients with fantastic success. And as I said, as a prosthetic, as a medical device, this is something that you would simply wear over your ear. And you would place the earbud into the ear canal. So it's a little bit like a hearing aid, but it has more of a form factor of uh, a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth device. So how does it work? Well, speech vibe works by uh, leveraging a known reflex that is common to all humans. And in fact, it's not only common to humans, but it's common to non-human primates, to uh, it's been observed in whales, in birds. Uh, it leverages the reflex uh, known as the Lombard reflex or the Lombard effect. 
So the Lombard effect was first described back in 1911 by a French ENT called Etienne Lombard. And he noticed that when you walk into or when you're, when you're in a noisy environment, without you having to do anything, without you having to think about it or cue yourself or intentionally um, do anything, your brain recognizes that you are in this ambiently noisy environment and it will automatically increase your voice volume for you. So uh, unlike most things in Parkinson's disease, the, um, the technology is very straightforward. Um, it's not complicated. In fact, a movement disorder specialist uh, in speaking with some time ago said, you know, you shouldn't refer to this as the Lombard reflex. You should refer to it as the cocktail party reflex. And I think that's a good analogy. Um, if you think about what happens if you walk into a cocktail party, there's groups of people chatting in the corner in the middle, and there's an ambient noise in the background. Well, again, that ambient noise is gonna trigger the Lombard effect, the Lombard reflex, the cocktail party reflex, and your brain is automatically going to uh, force you to speak louder to be heard amongst that ambient background noise or that background dip. Now, it's important to note that the device uh, incorporates an accelerometer in its components. Now, what's an accelerometer? An accelerometer is a device that measures motion. So what happens when we begin to speak? When we begin to speak, a couple of things happen. The jawbone is going to vibrate. The inner ear canal is going to vibrate. The accelerometer on the device is going to pick up that vibration. It's going to play the stimulus. And it's important to note that the stimulus only plays when the patient is talking. So you initiate speech, vibrations occur, accelerometer picks up the vibration, the stimulus then plays into the ear, and what happens? It triggers the cocktail party reflex or the Lombard effect. So it really is as straightforward and, and as simple as that. And we've noted that um, it improves speech for 90% of the people with Parkinson's that actually try it. Um, it is a very straightforward, simple apparatus and application to allow you to be heard. Um, I think we've just, we've just covered this. Important to note too that, um, again, it is voice activated. So the stimulus that the Parkinson's patient would hear is only played when you speak. When you speak, it plays, triggers the Lombard effect, voice volume increases 30 to 50%. Um, you know, one of the things and, and one of the most satisfying things that, that we've learned um, in promoting the speech by device is that obviously it's a tremendous benefit to the patient themselves. It brings them back into a communication environment. They can begin to, you know, converse with their, with their spouse or their care partner. They can get back on the phone and start talking to the grandkids. But what we really were struck by is the fact, the, the effect that it's had on the primary communication partner, on, on the care partner or the spouse. So we often get um, compliments that, you know, you gave me my husband back, um, that, you know, he's got a sense of humor back. He's now, he's, he's engaging in conversation. So the benefit is not only to the person or the patient with Parkinson's disease, but important to note that there's an equal benefit to the care partner or the primary uh, communication partner. So let's just compare um, uh, the, the two really available options. And I guess there's, there's three options. There's LSVT, um, there's Speak Out, which is a, a similar version or a similar uh, behavioral intensive coaching model to LSVT. And now we have the speech vibe device. Well, they do differ in some important aspects. As I mentioned before, uh, LSVT requires four one-hour sessions for four weeks and then a lifetime of ongoing uh, home exercise in order to maintain the benefit that LSVT therapy can give you. Compare that with, uh, with Speech5. Speech5 is, um, is an instantaneous device. Um, you're not gonna be going to the intensive uh, speech language pathology sessions. You can still see your speech language pathologist and we would highly encourage you to do so, but you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be seeing a, a speech therapist now, not for issues related to voice volume because the Speech5 device is going to take care of that, but your speech therapist can do so much more with you. They can work on issues like articulation, like pause frequency, like the rate of your speech. Uh, they can work on swallowing. Uh, they can work on cognition. So speech language therapy or speech language pathology is still a very important part um, of the, the 
person with Parkinson's lives, but the speech vibe device is going to be taking care of your voice volume for you. Um, both LSVT and speech vibe have shown the same clinical results that we have a 50% increase uh, in voice volume. Um, some people ask me, um, is it effective for patients with deep brain stimulation? And indeed it is. So we have, uh, we have tested this device on patients who have received DBS and the improvement in a DBS patient's voice is every bit as uh, dramatic and equal to those patients with Parkinson's who have not had uh, DBS. Um, the, the last and, and really one of the more important points is that the effects are immediate. So as soon as you wear the device and as soon as it's programmed to you, you're gonna notice that 30 to 50% increase in voice volume uh, immediately upon using uh, the technology. So this is an eye chart and I don't mean to um, have everybody read this, but I just wanna point out uh, a couple of things. So this was a paper right before COVID hit uh, in February, there was the uh, a motor speech conference in Santa Barbara, California, and this is where they presented for the first time an actual direct comparison of the speech vibe device to the LSVT loud therapy. And <clears throat> I'll just jump to the conclusion. And if you can follow my uh, my pointer down here in the right hand column, uh, the authors concluded that LSVT loud and training with the speech vibe device results in similar improvements to SPL. What's SPL? That's uh, sound pressure levels. It's your voice volume. So equal improvements to SPL voice volume and a decrease in pause duration post-treatment. Um, they also noted that neither treatment had an appreciable effect on articulation uh, rate or pause frequency in the current study. Um, but they did note that the speech vibe device or speech vibe training was significantly less effortful, both mentally and physically, than doing the training with the LSVT lab. And you might ask, well, John, how did they determine that it was it was easier? Um, and there is a there was a validated scale that was developed by NASA called the Task Load Index. And when you think about what uh, the responsibilities of an astronaut is during uh, during a space mission it's important not to overload the astronauts with too many tasks that are physically or mentally effortful because that's where a mistake might come in. So they compared the speech vibe device to LSVT loud using this task load index. And they concluded that, and if we look, follow my, my cursor here, excuse me, um, that the, the mental effort and required to do the LSVT loud therapy, and this is on a scale from zero to 100, but the mental effort required to, uh, to do LSVT loud ranked in around the 75th or the 80th percentile. You compare that to the speech vibe device, the, uh, the mental effort required to use the speech vibe device was down around the 15th or 20th percentile. So significantly less mentally taxing, uh, mentally effortful. And the same thing they saw on the physical side of the equation. Um, LSVT loud was determined to be um, in the 80th percentile in terms of physical effort to actually do uh, the therapy with the speech vibe device. And again, we're just wearing a prosthetic that plays a stimulus when you speak triggering the Lombard reflex or the cocktail party reflex, allowing you to speak 30 to 50% louder. So they concluded that the speech vibe device was significantly less physically effortful, uh, clocking in at around the 15th uh, percentile. Um, right before COVID, uh, we were in a, um, we were presenting to a Parkinson's disease uh, board, board meeting. Um, and one of the members happened to have this condition of low or soft voice. And they asked us if we would try the device, you know, do a, do a live demonstration uh, on this, this, um, this PD support group board member. Uh, his name was Don. And we said, sure. So we put the device on him, did a couple of quick uh, programming steps. And the, the, the jaws dropped around the, the boardroom table where they said, "Ma, we haven't heard that voice from Don in the last 10 years. And they wrote us a very nice uh, follow-up email. So just to, uh, again, to reinforce the fact that not only is, the, is the, uh, the effect of the device important for the patient with Parkinson's, but also to the communication partners uh, that the Parkinson's patient is trying to interact with. Okay, 
So um, if you would like to try the SpeechVibe device, you may be asking, okay, well, how do I go about getting this? And right now, um, the actual absolute easiest way to acquire the device is through the VA. So if you are a veteran and a veteran that receives their healthcare benefits at the VA, you can simply get a referral from your neurologist uh, to speech language pathology. Uh, they will do an evaluation on you. Uh, on a positive evaluation, they will send an order to the prosthetics department and the device can be shipped directly to your home or to the VA for uh, further programming. As I mentioned, uh, we are uh, newly covered by uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services uh, by CMS. Uh, we were approved for coverage on October 1st of this year. Uh, so if you are a Medicare beneficiary, um, you, you can access this device through your Medicare benefits. Um, skip this here. Um, I would uh, direct you, in fact, let me just, before I change this, um, if this is a device, something that, that you would like to try, I would encourage you to go to the Speech5 website, and I'm going to um, make this presentation available as a PDF, and I'll send it to Amber, and Amber can then distribute it to those of you um, on the call and uh, who are interested. But there is a customer uh, order form where you have to fill out some questions. This is a piece of durable medical equipment, so we have to go through a third-party DME provider, um, and your physician would have to do to, to do the same process. But, and here's kind of an interesting thing, this is, this is 2020, almost 2021, and we can now um, let you try the Speech5 therapy in the comfort of your own home. So we do have an application, and it's available on uh, the Apple App Store, so unfortunately it's not available on the Android platform, but it is available on iOS. So you would simply use your iPhone or your iPad, uh, go to the App Store, download the Speech5, uh, the, the Speech5 application. It's free of charge, there's no charge to it. And the app will walk you through a couple of steps to see if you are a good candidate for the actual device. Now, here's, um, this, you're looking at some screenshots um, from the, the actual device. I will tell you that in order for you to, to, to use the app, you're going to have to have a pair of corded headphones. And the reason that they have to be corded and not the, uh, the Bluetooth headphones is because on a corded headphone, this little rectangular box here, that's actually the microphone. So when you have this in your ear, you'll be speaking into the microphone. So a pair of corded headphones plugged into your iPhone, download the Speech5 application, and it's gonna walk you through a series of steps. It'll have you say a uh, pronounced ah, you know, ah, to get your fundamental frequency. Um, it'll have you read a passage that will appear in the application, and then it will have you reread that passage, but this time, the stimulus is going to be played into your ear, and we're going to measure how much louder you were with the stimulus being played as opposed to when the stimulus was not present. And at the conclusion of your, um, of your little test on the app, and this was, this was my results, um, you'll, get a, uh, you'll, you'll get a report. And mine said, you know, I was 54% louder using the Speech5 device than I was without the stimulus. So it's just a nice, quick, little, easy, no charge uh, way for you to evaluate uh, whether or not you are a good candidate for the Speech5 system. So if you have an iPhone, uh, if you have an iPad, please go to the App Store and check it out. Just remember to use your, your corded uh, headphones as you go through. The whole app system, it, it takes less than one minute for you to get your result. So it is very quick and very easy. Um, encourage you to go to the Speech5 uh, website, and it's www.speech5.com. Uh, you can join our mailing list. We can send you information, updates uh, as they become available. And it, important to note that in this era of COVID, uh, Speech5 is fully programmable uh, via our telehealth platform. So upon a successful um, stimula stimulation test, and if you're 
uh, speech pathologist or your neurologist decides that you are a good candidate for this device, we can simply ship the device to your home and then have one of our technicians remote in over the internet and then they would program the device to your specific needs because not everybody is going to need the same level of stimulation in order to get that 30 to 50 percent increase in your voice volume. So it can be done completely over the internet. Uh, you don't have to go to the doctor's office to get it programmed. Once it's programmed, it's programmed for life. You shouldn't have to do this again. Um, but interesting to note, uh, especially in this era of COVID where many of our visits with our physicians are done virtually and, and not in person. So here is, is my contact information. And like I said, I'm gonna PDF this and I will send this, make this available to Amber who can send it out to you if you're interested. Um, but please, if you, have, um, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, uh, I'm here for you to answer any questions that, that you may have. So Amber, if you wanna maybe unmute the crowd and see if there's, see if we've, stimulated any any uh, thoughts or conversation. All right. All right, I just asked everybody to unmute. We have a little bit of a smaller group, which is great for asking questions. Um, okay. Oh my God, what was that? <laughs> Did anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what if you already were hearing aids? Will that still work? Excellent question. And was that, was that John that asked that question? Yes, sir. John, excellent question. It's something that I, 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 I should put in my presentation because I, I, I get it frequently. Um, if you have bilateral hearing aids, so if you have, earing, um, you have aids in both ears, you are correct. I mean, you would have to remove one of your hearing aids in order to utilize the speech five device. Now that's not an elegant uh, answer or solution, but I want you to think about the context in which I, in which I give you that answer. Um, you know, the speech five device is to be worn when you are in a communication environment. So if by chance you were going to a movie theater and you're gonna watch a movie, whenever movie theaters open up and we can all go back to movie theaters, you would not use the speech five device, right? You would use your hearing aids because you're in a listening environment. But after the movie, if you go out for dinner or, or a drink or a bite to eat when restaurants open up and we're allowed to do that again, um, this is when you would remove one of your hearing aids and now utilize the speech lab device. Because now you're not in as much of a listening environment, you're in more of a communication environment. So for those that, that have one hearing aid, it's no problem. We can fit the, the speech lab device to either the left or the right ear. But if you do wear bilateral hearing aids, you would need to remove one of them in order to access the benefits uh, of a device that will give you 30 to 50 percent increases uh, in voice volume. So great, great question, John. Thank you. And I, I like your name, your first name. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Tom Cook speaking. Uh, how does the uh, application stimulate you? Okay, so that's an excellent question as well. So the, um, the device itself, when placed on the ear, so when I speak, jawbone vibrates, ear canal vibrates, the accelerometer on the device actually picks up that vibration and it will automatically play a stimulus into your ear, and it's something that I can hear right now, and your voice volume becomes 30 to 50% louder because the stimulus is actually triggering that Lombard effect, the Lombard reflex or the cocktail party reflex that we referred to a little bit earlier uh, in the presentation. Um, I hope that answered your question. Was, was, is, is that clear or, or can I unpack it a little bit more? Well, I was just, Wondering whether you know there was a little man who came out with a sign saying "Speak up, you." <laughs> okay, no. And so, where is that accent from? Um, originally Newcastle upon Tyne. Oh, fantastic! I, I I I thought I recognized something there. Um, so no, no, no little man with a sign that says "Speak up," and that's usually the. Um, the domain of your care partner, often the spouse. It's like, speak up, please, speak up. Um, the device itself, and one of the beauties 
of the speech vibe device is that the cue, if you will, to speak louder stays with the wearer as long as you're wearing it. So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to intentionally be louder. You're going to be louder as a result of that stimulus playing in your ear, but playing in your ear only when you begin to initiate speech. Yeah. We don't we don't have an iPad or a, a smartphone. I don't like devices that are smarter than me. Um, <laughs> so is there is there any way that we can do the trial without those devices? Um, there there is. So first, I would encourage you if you if you know anybody that has uh, an iPhone or an iPad. I mean that would be that would be one option. Um, if you were to go to your neurologist and you bring them this information saying, hey, I would like to be evaluated to see if I'm a candidate, a good candidate for the speech vibe device, what your neurologist would do would send you to a SLP, a speech language pathologist, who is familiar with the technology and many, most, uh, most speech pathologists are. And then the SLP, the speech language pathologist, would then um, do an evaluation with you in their clinic. So that way, okay. Well, we've we've been to a speech therapist here in Grand Island, so maybe we could just reestablish that connection. But would that require a referral from the neurologist to there? Generally, no. Um, and if your um, if your SLP, if your if your speech therapist uh, is not familiar with the speech <laughs> device we would ship him or her a device and then provide some training for them um, so they would have this unit in their clinic. So as patients like yourself would come in and want to be evaluated, they would have the technology to be able to evaluate them. Okay, great. Great. Hmm? Do that. Okay. Um, this is John Roy's wife and he has a question um, right now with his hearing aids, he has one programmed to feed in white noise and it helps him to speak louder. Okay. Would he, would he, would, how would this work in, in conjunction with this device? Um, I mean, would he have to cancel the white noise or? Well, um, so I'm not sure I understand specifically. So, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, John has two, uh, or we have two, two hearing aids in. One of the hearing aids is programmed to emit white noise that helps him uh, increase his voice volume. Yes, if I, it's a, a option I had the, I, uh, the provider uh, put in, and if I tap it, it'll give white noise, which makes it easier for me to talk louder. Excellent. All right. So you're leveraging that's this, this is interesting. So you are leveraging that same reflex, that Lombard reflex, the cocktail party reflex. So um, the, the stimulus that we play uh, through the device, it's not white noise. Um, it's actually called multi talker babble. Um, it's digitized, it's compressed uh, into our stimulus. So it would be worthy if, well, let me ask you the question. Do you or does your uh, your spouse or care partner, do they recognize that you are louder when the white noise is playing? I, no. No, I don't think so. No, I do okay. not. Okay. I saw so, some product over there. Uh, the product I saw, the, it was similar to what you have. And I asked my the, the provider if there's something she could do with the hearing aids, and she said yes. But it's, it's not real little white noise. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, I was, well, and I'm not as familiar. I know that we have a, um, we have some intellectual property that surrounds our device, including the stimulus. So we have a proprietary stimulus, if you will, and it's not white noise. It is, it is multi-talker babble. So I would encourage you um, to, to get evaluated, um, encourage you if you if you have an iPhone or an iPad uh, and a pair of headphones, you can evaluate yourself uh, this afternoon as soon as we hang up this call. If you don't, um, I would encourage you to talk to your neurologist or your speech therapist and say, "Hey, this bald guy 
uh, Saturday afternoon was telling us about this device that makes people speak louder. I want to see if it works for me. And let's go about it that way. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Great questions. Question. How is this thing powered? Is it battery? Uh, is it a common battery or is it a special order or hearing aid battery? And on average, how many hours can you use it before you have to change batteries? Okay, Barry, that's an excellent question. So I'm going to unplug here. So it is a um, it is a rechargeable battery. So there's a there's a lithium ion battery in the device itself. So mm -hmm. it is rechargeable, and it gets recharged through a recharging cradle. So this is okay. a this is a recharging cradle that says has a speech vibe logo on it. You generally would place this cradle next to your uh, your nightstand uh, by your bed, and when you go to sleep at night, you're going to take the device and you're going to simply put the device in the charging cradle, close the lid, and when it's plugged into AC power, I don't know if you can see that, but you have a charging light yeah. that actually appears. So the device can charge, if it's completely empty, it can go from 0% full to 100% full in about 90 minutes. So when you wake up in the morning, put the device on, you're gonna have enough battery power to last you eight to 10 hours of the day in a communication environment. And the reason that we are able to have such long lived battery is because remember, the stimulus is only going to play when you begin to speak. So if you're not speaking, the stimulus isn't playing, it's not drawing down any power. So it's only when you're in a conversation, when you are speaking, that the stimulus plays in the ear, the Lombard reflex is triggered, um, and the device is, is powered to, to uh, get you through an entire day without having to recharge it. So when you're not speaking, it's on like standby mode waiting for you to speak, and it will not use... I'm going to use that. That's yeah. great. And it doesn't use electricity until you start speaking, which then it puts the effect in. That is correct. So there's always there's there's always a little bit of power draw, low level power draw to yeah. keep the uh, the device active. But mm -hmm. that's great. Um, I want. In fact, I'm gonna I'm going to shamelessly adopt your phrase. It is on standby mode um, when when you're not speaking, but when you do initiate speech, vibrations get picked up. Stimulus plays, lumbar reflex is triggered, patients get 30 to 50% louder. That, that makes it a lot easier because a lot of devices have batteries and you have to hunt down the batteries. But if it's rechargeable and you can put it in the cradle, you know, and like you said, you're not using it, it stays in standby until you start talking. That's exactly right. you're, you're not using that much. You can get, you know, the whole day out of it. You can. And, and most, most patients, in fact, I, I don't know that I've come in contact with a patient um, that it hasn't lasted the day. We, we do have one trial attorney uh, that uses the device. Um, and even he, when he was arguing cases before a jury or interacting with the judge, um, you know, think about how much an attorney is speaking during the, uh, a court proceeding. Um, he has never reported that the device was, wasn't able to meet his needs for the, the length that he needed. Do you know what, what level of DBA the uh, device is responding to? Um, so you're referring to the, the decibel levels? Yeah. So uh, it's gonna be specific to each individual patient, but in general, so when we program the device, Again, we're going to do some um, routine exercises. Have you say that pronounced ah? Uh, we're going to record your fundamental frequency. We're then going to get a voice sample from you um, without the stimulus being played. And we're going to determine what your baseline decibel level is. And for most people in general, you know, it's 55 to 65 decibels. For a Parkinson's patient with hypokinetic dysarthria, we're probably talking around the 60 decibel range. So the device then says, okay, you're speaking at 60 decibels. We want to get you 50% louder. So we want to get you to 63 decibels because it's a logarithmic scale. 
So the device will, and we'll program the device to the effect that it's gonna boost your voice volume three decibels or 50% greater than you were without it. And I, I, I hope that, I'm sure you're much smarter than me, but I hope that made sense. No, it's just, a, I did some uh, messing around with uh, sound level meters and uh, they seem to come out with 70 dBA with what was needed to, to get me to a level that people could hear me. And if that if that is the case, so if you were, um, let's say your, your baseline voice level was, you know, 65 um, in order to get a 50% increase or if you if your if your voice level your your baseline was 66 decibels um, in order to get you 50% louder we would need to get you to the 70 db range uh, in order for the the effect to be noticeable so all right these are uh, some of the best questions I've had. I, I, I love talking to uh, Parkinson's support group. I did the, I did one last week uh, for a group out of Olympia, Washington. Um, but you guys are uh, are asking some some great questions, and I'm going to shamelessly adopt some of the phraseology that I've heard from uh, from today's group. So I, I, I want to thank you for that. That's an awesome group here in Nebraska. Yeah, it's Nebraska, John. Well, you know what? I'm a I'm a proud parent of uh, one of my daughters swam for the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a, another one uh, at swimming for Tulane, and then my third. If you can see my shirt here, what's that say? Army. Army. Oh, West Point. Yeah. So I've got a cadet who is at the game right now, and as soon as we conclude, I've got it taped. I'm gonna get in front of the TV and say, go Army! <laughs> <laughs> you went off my decibel scale. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, Amber, I'm going to, um, like I said, I'll, I'll make the PDF, send it to you. Please share it. Um, I'm glad that we're streaming this on Facebook. Um, you know, spread the word. I mean, try, talk to your neurologist, talk to your speech therapist, try the application, uh, see if you are a good candidate. Um, and if you are, and there's a 90% chance that you will be, um, talk to your doctors. Let other, let other people with Parkinson's know that there is something new uh, and different on the market to help them speak louder and, uh, and be better communicators. Awesome. So. I'll also have this recording um, on our website as well. So if you ever want to review this information or if you think that this is a video um, or a presentation that someone could benefit from who couldn't join us, here in a couple of days, I'll have it up on our website as well. Excellent. Thank you very you much, John. Have a great Bye. afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. John. Thanks. Thanks. Very Bye. informative. Bye. Thank, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Bye, Bye Mary. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now. Nice, na nice name. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Out of my name.